that was a nice ball. England 160 for five after 20. Maybe they'll win. If we get some wickets, maybe then we just need to try and bowl straight. Libby Snowdon is part of the increasing number of young girls who have been inspired by the successes of England women's cricket team in recent months. The perceptions of women playing sport has become positive in the past 10 years and women's cricket is slowly attracting media attention at national level. This is after last year's ICC World Cup victory, which has encouraged young girls to consider cricket as a career. Dream is to play for England. I want to be known for being a quite solid batsman, someone that's always cheery, talkative, full of fun. For 16-year-old Amelia Kite, who plays in the National Women's Championships for Warwickshire and Birmingham Bears, the journey to playing for England women means she sometimes have to play with boys. This is because at her level, the local school she attends does not have enough number of girls to make a team. Cricket is too a male-dominated sport. It will take the few women with great determination as Amelia and Libby to make it to the highest level and play for England. Um, so when I started, girls cricket actually wasn't that big. So there was only one girls team and they kind of assessed me and thought that I was at the very top end of that girls team. So they wanted to test me out and try and move the boys. I think it's still not quite viewed the same as the men. I think they've still got a lot more coverage and there's more money in men's cricket. And I think it'd be nice to see that equal out a little bit more. Equal pay in sport is an ongoing international debate that has so far been championed in tennis. ECB is, however, making efforts towards achieving that goal. They are the third cricket board in the world after Australia and India, which has rewarded athletes with central contracts. This has guaranteed England female cricketers around £50,000 a year. It is at this home of cricket in England, the Lord's Cricket Ground, that England women won the ICC World Cup in 2017 after beating India by nine runs. They did this in front of a sellout crowd of 24,000 people. A record 1.1 million people watched the game on television. And this has won them the hearts of cricket followers in England and the administrators of the game. That has inspired a new generation of fans and players. ECB has recorded a 30% increase in the number of girls' teams within their registered clubs. There is a continued growth of fan base. Each time Captain Heather Knight marches onto the pitch with their teammates on an international match. However, the numbers do not cascade down to domestic cricket where matches are largely attended by the players' family. This is a huge contrast to the men's domestic matches where spectators attend religiously. Could this be a reflection of a society that just accepts women's cricket as a wobby, while looking at men's cricket as the real deal? What, what do you think is unique to the women's game that, that may be different to the men's? Well, the women play the game just as hard as the men. Um, when you look at the strike rate balls per score in, it's virtually identical to some of the men's scores. So they just seem to play it a little more gentler, but I mean that in an... That's what you say. Women play gentler, he says, but fans love to be thrilled with power and speed in sport. Is this politely suggesting the women's game is boring to follow? I think um, the game is at a stage now where um, I, we don't have to worry as much about whether the product is good. I think it is very good. Um, and it's changing the perceptions around um, how it's good. It's a product in its own right and it doesn't have to be like men's cricket. Um, and I think um, so there's that side of it in terms of telling people and the media have got a huge role to play in, in promoting women's cricket in a, in a number of ways. Um, 
I think there's the simple things that the media can do in terms of making women's cricket a normal sport for girls to play. It's still seen as a very male dominated, it's normal for boys to play and actually it's abnormal for a girl to be playing. A local organization, Women's Sports Trust, has partnered with Sky Sports in a campaign called Show Up to encourage spectators to attend women's sporting events. The motive behind it being to increase the number of spectators at women's games. The core of the argument is that media follow numbers. Thus, by encouraging a huge following in the women's game, more media coverage of women's sports will be experienced. I'm sure now. Now it's your turn. Just show up. What wonderful support. Now the wicket falls. Just got up. An amazing day of netball. Go on, show up. Sarah's the champions! It's time to show up. But how do fans show up at events they have not been informed of? by the media. It's very much a chicken and egg scenario, isn't it? I suppose people would argue that the, uh, if the media coverage increases, then the crowds will increase as well. And some people in the media say, we'll increase the crowds and then we'll increase the media coverage. Uh, one has got to come first, uh, uh, but I think we are seeing a shift change towards more media coverage. Uh, and hopefully that will then trigger the, the crowds. But there have been some very good crowds, of course, uh, thinking of the England Women's World Cup final victory at Lords. That was a complete sellout, which was fantastic. And you only have to think back to a few days ago where the men's uh, one-day cup final was played at Lords, and that was nowhere near full. While the media is there to inform, educate and entertain its audience, it is also a business targeted at making profits. This has been the argument by the big bosses in the fourth estate as they pursue what are newsworthy events. And this basically means news they believe people would want to read about, watch on television or listen to on radio. I think the media can be quite short-termist. They're interested in the here and now, and they're interested in very much in kind of making money. Um, it's all about kind of um, commercial interest right here, and um, they don't necessarily see the long-term prospects in that sense. Um, and I also think that we're still, um, in terms of the, the way the game is being covered at international level, relatively in its infancy. I mean, even five years ago, so when I started out in 2013, that was five years ago. Um, and you know, there's, there would have been two or three people covering a women's test match, um, and that's now grown to the level that we're at now. Um, but that's still relatively recently. And so, if um, major newspapers like the Guardian, who are now one of the newspapers that cover women's cricket best, have only recently started covering international level, then it's going to take a little bit of time to get underneath that. I suppose as well, there's pressures in the written press at the moment um, in terms of you know they're having to there's budgetary constraints, they're having to kind of take shortcuts about how they cover things and women's domestic cricket doesn't seem to be a priority for them. Um, the Kia Super League has certainly got a fair amount of coverage um, in the first couple of years that that's been going, but beneath that, you know, there still doesn't seem to be a recognition by the media that it's something that they can make money out of, I guess. Ralph Nicholson is a freelance journalist covering women's cricket. She has co-founded CricketHead.com, an online women's cricket magazine. She acknowledges an improvement in the media coverage of women's cricket, although suggesting the need to expand it to more free-to-air networks. We need to get women's cricket on free-to-air television, ultimately. Um, we've got highlights at the moment going out on Channel 5 this summer, and that's a first, and that's a really important step. Um, but at the moment, I think the fact that um, the coverage is predominantly almost entirely on Sky makes it really difficult. Um, people can't just sort of flick on the TV um, and casually tune into a women's cricket match. You have to be an active cricket supporter already um, in order to pay out for that um, cricket subscription for a Sky. So if we could get women's cricket on, on the BBC, that would be amazing. For local tabloids and broadsheets, football traditionally dominates the back page. The little cricket that is covered mostly focuses on England men. I mean, since since I've been covering it, uh, the county championship, uh, the, the local paper to where I live, uh, have had like a little 
uh, paragraph of women of, of Nottinghamshire in the, in the paper. It, it could take generations of journalists as well because different journalists who believe in certain things and what they should cover will slowly move up into certain roles of, uh, of editorial responsibility and that's where I think we'll slowly start to see a change because I, there, I really believe there is an audience out there. Women are uh, half of the people on the planet um, and um, for too long I, I sense that media organisations have, have, have neglected women's sport unfortunately and I, I hope that will change in the years to come. Former England international Anita White who captained the national hockey team to victory in the World Cup in 1975, believes there is a lot of human interest stories from women's sports that are inspirational and therefore newsworthy. Fantastic, good, fantastic media stories around women and sport. You know, you see any story about um, women tennis players, women athletes, women karate, any, any sport, if you follow the, the top women, or not even the top women, you follow the women in those sports and hear their stories and see how good they are and how fantastic they, they can, how fantastically they can do the sport. I think it makes a, re a really good story. So I don't really buy the, the thing about uh, the business case. I think it's a, um, I think if you really look at it and if the sport is presented well by the media and the stories are told well, that will, that will attract an audience. The former Sports England director now contributes to the empowerment of women in sports through the Anita White Foundation. She acknowledges there has been great progress in women's sports since her playing days. There's been huge, huge advances made, particularly in uh, participation of women in sport. Uh, and most sports realise that if they want to develop, they need to include women and girls that they're missing out on a huge uh, market and opportunity if they're not. Uh, so I think there has been a lot of progress and it's much more, uh, sport is much more accessible to women uh, and affordable and the image of sport, of sport has changed maybe so that women are attracted to it more than they used to be. One of the nice things about women's sport is I, I don't think the fame aspect has really got to any of the athletes yet, so it's quite nice to have a conversation with a, a real human being, a, a people who are, are quite happy to engage about their, their career, their life, um, and speak quite openly. That's quite nice. And the women's sport community is very, very friendly, overwhelmingly. Lots of volunteers, lots of people um, who are giving up lots of their time to try and further the cause of women's sport. Uh, unfortunately, things are just still lagging a bit behind in terms of the commercial investment and um, the professionalism. Although women have made commendable strides in cricket, with ECB recently making a 40% pay increment for female cricketers, the lens of the media remain focused on the national women's team or highly sponsored tournaments like the Kia Super League. County cricket and junior teams where the players are groomed remains out of the media lens focus. The pattern of how the media steps in is evident in the attention the Kia Super League has commanded. It is not only about the big number of spectators, but also the big money bag sponsors put in. Where ECB has been actively involved and also the title sponsor pushing their brand, media coverage has appeared to come in naturally. I like to think that um, in the next few years, the women do get more equality. And, and to some extent, that's the ability to get paid at different levels in the game. But I think more importantly, it's to get recognised as a sport more. At the moment, if you're playing at England level, there's a lot of recognition, you go to the ECB website, etc. But at the county level, that doesn't happen so much. You have to go to the counties to see that. It's nothing on the ECB, where you would see that in the men's county game if you went to the ECB. So I think seeing recognition across um, all the various media outlets as well as um, pay and everything else would be great to see a women's cricket and that in itself drives people to want to be part of the game because 
at the end of the day, everybody wants to be successful. And they want to... The lack of media facilities at the Women's County Cricket discourages the media. Tom Gary says this sees most journalists preferring to cover men's cricket or England women where there is a media centre with access to facilities. One of the issues is a distinct lack of good facilities. If you go to a fixture there's often no Wi-Fi, there's often no chairs to sit on, no table to work at. Uh, whereas in men's sport that's very different. So that's, that's one of the areas where it still needs to catch up. In this era of a shrinking print media due to the advancing digital age, Newspapers have cut on cricket news. While football dominate their content, anything on cricket that makes the news has remained that of national teams. The head of media and communications at the home of cricket in Birmingham, Tom Rawlings, says the lack of media coverage in cricket is not gendered. It's not really a problem just for the women's game, it's a problem for cricket in general. So at the end of the 2014 cricket season, our local newspaper, the Birmingham Mail, completely got rid of its, its cricket correspondent. So there's nobody writing for our main regional newspaper who used to previously cover the team, uh, covering cricket. What we've had to do to address that is that reporter, Brian Halford, who was made redundant from the Birmingham Mail, we've brought him in-house to a role with us so that that way we're able to feed not just the Birmingham Mail, but all the local newspapers around the region with coverage of cricket. And that's not just the men's team, that's the women's team as well. Um, getting that coverage is difficult within those media papers, but if we can at least provide content, hence having a reporter, you've at least got that captive audience who's willing to take the coverage uh, from that side. The problems that women's cricket has now is that it is coming to prominence just at a time when nationally all cricket, including the men's game, uh, has diminished in national newspapers. Um, so it is a difficult time but there's a lot of progress has been made. As the media covers things which are extremely popular or they know will be and how do things, how do new concepts get popular without that media coverage. So it's a very difficult balance to strike. Uh, there are, there's definitely been an increase in certain national newspapers giving credibility and coverage to the women's game but uh, it's really uh, important for the people running women's cricket to keep knocking hard on the, the door of the media because if you can get column inches in the national papers and online and uh, with the big cricket websites then it's going to be more visible isn't it and more people are going to know about women's cricket which is first and foremost um, the battle that you have to win isn't it because uh, if people don't know that there's a women's cricket match in Birmingham next week they can't go and watch it. Most domestic cricket clubs have resorted to using social media to inform their followers on the activities of their women's teams. Nadia Bakochi, Women and Girls Development Officer at Warwickshire Cricket Board, explains how social media has been of great importance to them. Social media now um, is really really powerful so we're kind of promoting images, videos um, and kind of promoting good experiences that people have had so making people aware of what cricket looks like, what cricket can offer um, to individuals. So I think really it's important to have um, a lot of positive role models. I mean, since obviously England won the Women's World Cup, there have been, there's been a lot more positive publicity, whereas previously it was kind of under the radar. You look on BBC Sport and it's always the men that are at the top. But I think the success actually at national level has really filtered down and we're seeing it at kind of a county board local level. So I think positive role models are important. But now there's so much more affordable technology out there. There's different, I was talking about earlier about digital platforms that um, you can, there can be this incredible uh, moment in it on a cricket pitch where there's a incredible, um, you know, diving catch or a yeah, hundred off 30 balls, even though that's impossible. Um, and it can be captured on a phone or it can be captured on a, you know, a camera and then it can go viral on, on social media. So there are, it's a lot more opportunities now for um, that progression. Although social media is another platform administrators of the game can take advantage of to push the stories of their female players, most clubs have used their accounts to largely post about their men's teams. There is much less of women's exciting video highlights than they are of men's side. Ashley Giles is a former England international all-rounder. He now works at Edge Baston as the director of cricket for Warwickshire. I asked him whether he foresee a time where women's cricket would command the same media attention as the men in domestic league. Um, 
Will it ever attract the same amount of attention? I, I don't know, but I think it needs to, we need to push it to attract more. There needs to be more equality on that front, and I think what we all hope for down the line, and whether that's the next four years, five years, ten years, is to have a women's professional game in this country as well. Um, apart from that, you know, clearly the, the women's game has really been a poor relation to the men's game and, and we need to try and uh, adjust that balance. The talent in women's cricket is definitely there and the energy from the young and upcoming players is undoubted. Uh, well, in my opinion, I think it's, it's come a long way. I mean, it's, um, I think particularly in the last 24 to 36 months, uh, it's really accelerated in, in popularity. Uh, and clearly the success of the, the England women's team in the World Cup has, has made a massive difference as well. Um, there's clearly an appetite out there for women's cricket. Um, and w what we need to do now is feed that appetite, whether that be um, as county cricket clubs or, or from a media perspective, we need to make sure that we, we are pushing the game well enough to, to keep on attracting a new audience, but also um, new participants. It's a great place to be if you're a female cricketer and I think it's doing great things for women's sport generally, not just cricket, the way it's developing at the moment. My dream would be to play for England and be famous, to be on TV and to inspire young girls to start playing cricket. The decision rests with the media to have an approach that would make their business profitable while making Libby's dream come true. This would still be a newsworthy story that is educational informative and entertaining.